for this particular assignment, you're going to actually complete it within Edpuzzle. So we're still focusing on step number two of art analysis, which is called analysis, and you're going to need the analysis worksheet for this assignment. So I suggest opening up the link and having it open in a new browser window so you can actually continue this Edpuzzle at the same time. So step number two is looking at how the elements and principles of design are being used in an artwork. So we're looking at how the artist used the elements of design to create the principles of design because you need them to work together. You can talk about them separately, but when we talk about the principles of design, we usually mention the elements of design. And really what we're doing is we're analyzing the formal organization of the artwork. There is no personal opinion, it's objective, it's based on what you can see, and it's also based on what you understand about the elements and principles of design. And it does take some thinking to be able to explain how they're being used. This is probably the hardest step of all four steps. So a good analysis paragraph, right? You would be writing two paragraphs, one about the elements, one about the principles. So there are two paragraphs with complete sentences. Watch your grammar. When you complete these assignments in a Google Doc, you can use spell check. It's a good idea to reread what you typed so you know that it's actually coherent. Did you identify the dominant elements or principles of design that are being used? And I'm going to usually ask you to identify three to four. Sometimes I'll ask you to identify two. It really depends on the task, but just choose the dominant elements or principles that stand out to you? Did you explain how those chosen elements and principles of design are used? How many sentences should you use? It's up to you. Though if you're trying to use one sentence per element, I catch on and then I start thinking, are you actually being very thorough though? Are you using descriptive language to help explain the use of the elements and principles? Basically, are you referring to that analysis vocabulary worksheet that has all these great descriptive words that actually makes your language sound more academic? And did you identify where the chosen elements and principles of design are used? Often this is the part that my students forget. You, you have to explain where they're being used. Yes, we can see the photo of the sculpture, but where? Be specific. And have you determined what the features of the artwork actually suggest? An ineffective analysis has maybe one paragraph because you combined the elements and the principles all together in one paragraph. You only identified one to two elements and principles of design. You did not clearly explain how the chosen elements and principles are used in that specific artwork you are analyzing. Be specific about what you see. Are you not using the language from the analysis vocab worksheet? Basically, does your writing sound kind of bland or even possibly elementary? Now, this doesn't mean you have to go crazy and try to use a lot of words from the worksheet, but did you pull maybe two or three? Did you not identify where the elements and principles of design are used and you're just assuming the viewer knows what you're talking about? And then you might be thinking, well, if I'm looking at an artwork like this one here on the screen, which is made of balloons, what if the elements are used everywhere, right? Then provide a few examples. For example, if I'm talking about the use of line, right, in this sculpture, I would say line is used throughout the sculpture. Just pointing that out, right? Most of the thick curved lines are in the center where they appear to intertwine, loop around, and surround a mass of pink. The lines become thinner at the edges of the sculpture. Now this is an assumption. I don't know if this is actually closer and farther away, but based on what I see, I have to make an assumption, right? So there are lines used everywhere, but I'm just pointing out a few. I'm not gonna do an exhaustive list of every type of line and where they are all used, cause I'll go crazy. But I'm saying, hey, most of the lines are thick, they're curved, hey, they're in the center. Another example, this one obviously uses organic forms, right? They're all tubes. So this sculpture uses organic forms because they are three-dimensional and appear to be long curved tubes. Like there's forms everywhere. There are several bundles of forms in the center and at the edges of the artwork. 
So I'm pointing out, hey, there's actually bundles of forms. Yes, it's made of form, but this is where I'm seeing some of them. So don't just list what you see. Describe how the element principle is being used and identify where it's located. So today you're going to be completing an analysis of the use of elements and principles in two different sculptures. And as I said, you're going to be completing this within the Edpuzzle. And I've set up this assignment so each paragraph is worth 10 points. So you're only typing two paragraphs, though they are going to be separate. So this first artwork, it's not on this screen right now, but it's going to be an artwork by Marjorie Schick. So a little bit of context about her work, just so you understand kind of what you're looking at. You can see she makes large body jewelry and she even made a pair of shoes. So I know a lot of information here, but I'll sum it up for you. So she was a female artist. Her art focused on jewelry. Her work has been exhibited internationally, and her jewelry is made from non-precious materials that can be worn on the body, such as fabric and plastic. She's been making art for the past 55 years. She was actually one of the first artists to create wearable sculptural objects. And designers really like her work because of the size, the scale, the colors that she uses, right? Her work is huge. We call this large body work, and you can actually see large body work in the form of tattoos, body painting, and even sculptural clothing. So she was interested in how one becomes part of the sculpture by experiencing it, right? You experience her work. You don't just look at it and wear it. And she wants her artwork to affect the viewer and the wearer, which is why the artwork uses bold colors and the jewelry is physically large. and um, her materials she uses are wood, paper mache, wire, canvas, paint, and paper. So notice she's not using, you know, super expensive materials. So this is the artwork you're going to type an analysis paragraph about this particular piece. We're going to call it necklace. You're going to identify three dominant elements that are being used. Please do not create a description, you know, this is an artwork by Marjorie Schick and it's titled Necklace and this is what I'm going to talk about. No. Locate specific areas where those elements are being used and uh, make sure you use the voc analysis vocabulary worksheet to help you out. All right. The second paragraph is going to be about one of these artworks by Alessandro Gallo. So these are two ceramic artworks that he's done. And you can get actually see the actual size of the pieces. So they're not huge. They're about maybe 13, 14 inches tall. So who is Alessandro Gallo? He's an Italian artist. He specializes in human animal hybrids made of clay. And when he was in college studying painting, he actually started with digital photography, where he would manipulate photos and he would put in pictures of animals in city settings, mostly based in London. Um, so his work is meant to be humorous, but it also makes us question our relationship with the natural world. The figures often appear kind of bored, kind of lonely, right? Very solitary. Um, so he actually begins his work by photographing a model from multiple angles. He references those photos and images from wildlife books while sculpting. He covers the sculptures with clothing, tattoos, and other, you know, uh, accessories, right? We have a bag, um, you know, so they look like, you know, humans, except they have animal heads. So this is the artwork you're going to type a analysis paragraph about. Specifically, identify three principles of design. Please do not give me a, a paragraph about what you're going to explain and that, you know, this is created by Alessandro Gallo. It's titled whatever. No, just focus on these are the three principles of design that are being used in the artwork and this is how they're being used. And again, please use the analysis worksheet to help you out.